Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about where to start if you just got a Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. All right, so this is a video that I have done in the past, so it might be a repeat if you've been around the channel for a while, but there's a lot of uh, new subscribers on the channel, and I'm getting uh, more and more emails uh, pertaining to this very question. So I wanted to kind of readdress it. The last time we filmed this, I think Stretch was still the uh, main operating system for the Raspberry Pi, and now we've moved on to Buster. So let's take uh, just a few minutes and, and discuss this. If you just got your Raspberry Pi, you're going to have three choices of operating system to install on your Pi. Uh, if you go over to the uh, raspberrypi.org website and click on Downloads and then Raspbian, you'll see that you've got uh, Buster, uh, I believe it's called the full version, and that'll include basically everything and the kitchen sink. Uh, now there's another version in there called Buster Desktop Only, and that's the one I prefer to run. Uh, it gives us a desktop environment so that it's familiar to us, but it limits the extra things that get installed. The third option is Buster Lite, and you probably want to steer clear of that unless you really know what you're doing and have a very specific project in mind for that. Also, uh, I would avoid the Noobs download. Uh, I, I, I've just never had good luck with it. It seems like something is always uh, interfering when we go to run one of the scripts or do something. I'm not exactly sure what's different about that. I just know to kind of avoid that one. All right, so now that you've got uh, the operating system on your Raspberry Pi, we need to ask ourselves, how are we going to use this Raspberry Pi? Are we just going to leave it in the shack, connected to the radio, and use it uh, from the shack and never take it portable? Well, you can probably skip things like the GPS or the real-time clock. However, uh, if you're going to go portable with it, the Raspberry Pi does not have a real-time clock built in. So what this means is if you shut your Pi down and you boot it back up, say, a week later, and it's not connected to the Internet, your time will be off by the week that it was uh, shut down. So in between the boots, where whatever the time was when you shut the pie down, that's going to be the time when you bring it back up. Now, again, if you're in the shack, this is not a big deal. You're constantly connected to the internet. It's going to grab that time off of the internet and you're good to go. However, if you plan to take this thing out into the field and you're going to work with things like JS8 Call or WSJTX, where time is critical to make those uh, contacts happen, then we've got to look at another source to get time while we're in the field. There's two options uh, to do that. We can do that with a GPS dongle uh, that'll plug into one of the USB ports on the back, or we can do that with a real-time clock module. Either one of those uh, will help us to gain or keep accurate time while we're in the field. And if you want a little bit of redundancy, you can always do both. Now, another question we need to ask ourselves is how do we intend to power our Pi? Uh, by default, the Raspberry Pi comes with, uh, well, the Pi 4 comes with a USB-C uh, connector on the side of it. Uh, so we're going to need, if we're working in the field, we need to worry about converting 12 volts down to the 5 volts that the Pi needs. So we're going to have to take some sort of buck converter with us uh, or something along those lines so that we can convert our 12 volts uh, source down to the 5 volts that the Pi needs. Now there's a couple of uh, options here that can make life a little bit easier. One of them is a power board by Maker Focus. And I really like this board. In fact, I'm running it on uh, both of my Raspberry Pi 4s. It comes with a built-in fan, so that helps with the, uh, the issues with the Pi 4 running a bit hotter than some of the previous generations. And it has a built-in buck converter. So it's got a 5.5 millimeter barrel connector on the side. We can plug 12 volts into that, and the onboard buck converter will take care of 
uh, converting that down to 5 volts for us and feeding it into our Pi. So it makes it really convenient with that board uh, to be able to just power the Raspberry Pi with 12 volts. Now, you could do the same thing by buying uh, some of the small buck converters that you find on Amazon. And I'll leave a link to both of these products, guys, down in the, uh, in the description below. But if you buy some of those small buck converters, you can go ahead and make up your own uh, little pigtail to be able to plug up 12 volts to it and get that converted over to 5 volts. So, and I've done this as well in the past. On one end, I've got power poles for one of my Raspberry Pi 3s, and the other end plugs into a couple of the GPIO pins. So, either way you choose to go, that's up to you, but it is something, especially if you're going to be working portable, you do need to think about. Okay, so now you've got all of the hardware that you need for your Raspberry Pi, it's time to decide how you prefer to install the applications that you may want to use for ham radio. I've done an entire three-part video series on how to build the Pi manually, and I'll leave a link to those videos right up, uh, right up in the corner here. So you can go through that and uh, follow the steps in the documentation and in the videos to go through and install each of the applications that you want to use on your Raspberry Pi. I've also uh, more recently completed another script called Build-A-Pi. And again, I'll leave a link to that right up at the top. The Build-A-Pi script, after you get your uh, operating system flashed onto your SD card, you want to open your terminal window and run one command that will download the Build-A-Pi script and go ahead and start running it. Once that uh, script runs, it's going to ask you for uh, a couple of pieces of information. Uh, your call sign is one of them. If you're installing WinLink, it's going to ask you for your WinLink password, grid square, uh, a couple of other little pieces. But that script will actually take care of building the entire Raspberry Pi for you. The only thing that's not currently including in that is uh, installing the necessary things for the real-time clock. But we're going to be adding that to the build a pie script soon. So you do need to decide how you want to install the software. If you go the manual route, I feel like you're going to learn a bit more about the pie. Uh, and if you just want to skip that and get up and running as quick as possible, then you can go ahead and use uh, the build a pie script. One thing I would recommend, regardless if you're going to work in the shack or in the field, uh, is I would go ahead and try to get rig control configured uh, between the Raspberry Pi and your radio. It just makes life super convenient for you, and uh, if you use some of my scripts, it opens up some things uh, that we can use, like the auto PAT connections in PAT menu. Uh, those are only available if you're running rig control. So I highly recommend setting up rig control between your Pi and your radio. Now, the last thing I want to talk about uh, will definitely not apply probably if you're in the shack, but if you want to carry your Pi into the field, you want to look at installing the auto hotspot. Now, you can do this manually uh, with the video series uh, that I recommended earlier, or if you run the build a Pi script, it has an option to install the auto hotspot uh, for you as well. The purpose of the auto hotspot is... When you're in the shack and it can see your shack's Wi-Fi signal, the Raspberry Pi will go ahead and connect to that signal and give you regular uh, internet access on your Raspberry Pi. However, when the hotspot can no longer see that Wi-Fi connection in your shack, then it will generate its own Wi-Fi signal, a hotspot, that you can connect to with another wireless device. Once you've made the connection to the Raspberry Pi through the hotspot with your wireless device, now you can run a VNC viewer and you're able to completely control your Raspberry Pi using the wireless device. So the wireless device becomes your keyboard, your mouse, and your monitor. When I'm in the field, I'm typically using an old iPad mini for this purpose. 
Okay, guys, well, there's what I would do and kind of some of the considerations that I would keep in mind before I started building a Raspberry Pi. I hope this helps point you in the right direction as well. Good luck with your next Pi build. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.